Assalamu alaikum, welcome to another episode on Close Shave TV. Today I'm at Bay's Diner, which is a Turkish themed diner and restaurant based in Erdington, Birmingham. It's based on a hit series known as Derlis Etrol, Resurrection Etrol, which many people have called the Muslim Game of Thrones. It's become a huge hit in the Middle East, in Turkey, of course, and now even here in the West. I'm going to speak to the owner about his diner and discover a few themes that we can discuss with the owner. Assalamu alaikum, Sajjad Rahman. Alaykum. How are you Assalamu doing? Alaykum. First of all, congratulations on uh, Bay's Diner. It's like a lovely place. Uh, you opened it at the beginning of the year. Um, it's towards the end of uh, January, so the beginning of the year. 2019, yeah? 2019. And obviously it's got this Turkish theme, uh, the idea of Bay's Diner from uh, the hit series, uh, Derlis Etherol, uh, Resurrection Etherol. Tell us a bit about why you opened this place based on that uh, famous uh, Ottoman theme. To be honest, I'll be honest with you, originally when I opened it wasn't meant to be Ertrul based. Okay. So I named it two bays because I have two sons. I named okay. it after that. A lot of people came in. Because I put the flag on, they thought it was Ertrul based. So a lot of people came in uh, expecting a lot of things. So we add, had to add in a lot of the deco later on just to just to meet the customer's criteria. All right, so kind of evolved into that theme and the it idea. It kind of did uh, evolve into it. Yeah. So when you say the the flag, you're talking about that sign there, which is the sign of the um, Kai uh, tribe. The Kai tribe, yeah. And that's the tribe supposedly that uh, yeah. Ethrol and the founders of the Ottoman Empire were from, right? That's correct, yeah. Okay. Now Ethrol, he was the father of Uthman, right, or Osman, right, which that's is the insane. the first uh, Osman Ghazi, who's the founder of the Ottoman Empire, 1299. That's correct, yeah. Okay, so why is it important to you, for example? I mean, do you follow the season yourself? I do, yeah. I'm up okay. to date on it, yes. Okay, so, I mean, do, do you think that it's something that was needed in, especially the Muslim world? Because, obviously, it was in Turkish originally, and a lot, even a lot of the Turkish, like, uh, filmmakers, producers, they weren't expecting how huge it was going to become. And even the Western world's on it, the Arab world's on it as well. Why do you think it's important uh, for mainly Muslim youth to reconnect with history? I think it's more than anything, it's the sentiment of Islam. You know, a lot of people, we attach to Islam. This is portrayed in a very positive manner. That's not something that we've seen anywhere, anywhere in media. You know, let that be in movies, let that be in um, news articles. Someone will start off with it, but then they'll always, you know, corrupt mm -hmm. themselves. Um, don't want to mention no names about any politicians mm -hmm. or anything, but intention always does start off good. Um, I was quite shocked uh, after watching the series that you know they kept his um, identity as a, as a strong believer in Islam. Mm. I would have thought halfway through they would have changed the end. Got a bit know, romantic. Got a bit romantic <laughs> and thrown a bit of dirt on his, uh, so, dirt on his character. Well, so the series there's about five seasons, I believe. Yeah. Five seasons, yeah. What season are you on? I'm up to date, unfortunately. I've got, nothing, I've got nothing else to watch now. Um, do you think a lot of it is also to do with like nostalgia, like? Many, because Muslim world, you know, the crisis of leadership, politics, etc. We feel that there's this kind of romantic, glorious past that we want to go back to. Do you think some of it might be due to do uh, with that, that is, as well? How that, popular that, that is definitely it, what it is. As in Muslims these days, they describe us and make us look like the scum of the earth. That's one thing that shows us in a positive manner. And we would like to go back to that. We had a shield then, we had a protector then. Today, our own leaders are doing us over, you know, mm. for what? Mm. I mean, it's funny you say that because, you know, you said we're, we're, we're portrayed as a scum of the earth and that's another thing, especially the male Muslim men as well, in, you know, Hollywood or Western film, generally, we're portrayed as either terrorists or criminals or thugs, so I think, I think a lot of people kind of connected with the fact that, you know, finally there's like a Muslim hero. I mean, people are calling it like the Muslim or the Turkish Game of Thrones, aren't they? They are yeah. calling that. The Game of Thrones, I watched that as well. Have that, you watched that as well? Yeah, that's a disappointment. <laughs> oh, you talking about the final the, season? The final <laughs> season, yeah, compared to um, Jirili Sartori. Well, it's yeah. funny, so, so, I've not watched Game of Thrones. I've only watched up to season two in uh, Etrol, and I gave up because it was taking over my life, to be honest with you. Because, you know, it gets addictive. No, no, it's but you watched both. What's I watched both, like? to be honest. Um, you know, when I watched Game of Thrones, I mm. thought there's nothing that's going to beat you. I thought, this is it. This is the best series out there, nothing's going to beat it. Yeah. As soon as I started watching it, I don't think Game of Thrones has anything on it whatsoever. I say that to a lot of mm -hmm. people. Um, Game of Thrones was meant to be, you know, dominating the whole world. You know, there's a uh, certain stars that I follow on um, 
Instagram. Yeah, yeah. They're watching Game of Thrones as well, but Erdogan. So, do you think also like because you know a lot of people question the historical accuracy of Erdogan? For example, they say Ibn Arabi is in there. We know Islamic history. Ibn Arabi. There was two types. There was a Maliki faqih scholar from Al Andalus, yeah, and then there's the Sufi, the well-known Sufi. Uh, Muhyiddin ibn Arabi and I believe in the series it's Muhyiddin ibn Arabi that's in that one and he's obviously given advice etc etc um, uh, some people like well why is it so Sufi influenced why is it but then it's part of the heritage and culture I think isn't it definitely you know what I mean um, in regards to history the love story itself I don't know too much about <laughs> it um, but in regards to accuracy of the hadith and Quran it's actually spot on point mm. so even in uh, I don't want to spoil it because you're not, <laughs> you're not up to date bro. on one of them where everyone thought he was dead. His tribe wanted to migrate back to where his brother was mm -hmm. and that's when he popped back up miraculously. Um, and he narrated the hadith about, you know, when the Prophet ﷺ passed away Sorry, and uh, Abu Bakr came and he said, because those of you who follow Muhammad know that he's a man and he's dead. Mm -hmm. Those of you who follow Allah know that he's ever living. So he reminds them these things. Right, and there's a lot yeah. of things that he reminds them of. So they slightly can find from the Quran or hadith. Yeah, exactly. Okay, interesting. Um, look, we know talk about the historical accuracy. Maybe 95% of it is just you know it's just folklore, and it's just uh, producers trying to make a good series, right? Yeah. Um, so it's fiction. A lot of it is fiction, but it's based on real historical figures. Do you think there's also an element of maybe the the film producers? Just taking advantage of uh, Muslim emotions, for example, you know, the audience, uh, they know we're going to react in a very positive way to something like this. To be honest, as regards to the producer, I don't know, you know, his intentions. And mm. the says a Muslim should make 70 excuses for them. Mm. As for, you know, you've got people like Erdogan, which uh, what I'm going to say is going to offend a lot of people. Erdogan? Okay. Yeah, mm. um, which, who's a big supporter of it? But to be honest, you know, all he does is give all these big rhetorics. A man like Ertul, is a man of action. When he said this is an issue, he resolved that problem. Mm -hmm. A man like Omar of Dillan, who is a man of action, when there's a problem, he resolved it. Mm -hmm. Previous people, previous leaders, they've resolved it. Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm talking about prior to the destruction of the Khilafah. So Mubarak since the destruction yeah. of the Khilafah, we've had nothing but puppets. When you said the Khilafah, you're talking about the Ottoman Khilafah, the Ottoman Khilafah. The Ottoman, Ottoman Khilafah, yeah. Khilafa, so mm -hmm. since 1924, what have we had? We have had nothing but someone who just gives... Big talks on no actions. Well, we've had mainly what we have today. We have nation states which were carved up during the European colonial period, and after that, you know, literally they got a, a, a pencil and a ruler, and this is for France, this is for Britain, and we are where we are today, right? I mean, going back to your question, I don't think you know what. I didn't think he expected Islam to sell, and it did sell. So it's actually worked in his benefit. If he did do it. Could have done it with the um, clear intentions. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's been like a reawakening because we know, obviously, uh, since the Ottoman Empire came to an end, uh, it was, well, now we have Turkey, right? The Republic of Turkey. Uh, and it's very secular, and a lot of people are not really into religion, which is their choice, no problem. But I guess a lot of people have found like a reawakening of their identity, taking claim back of their Islamic identity, Islamic past. Because some people, in fact, even a lot of Turks, were made to feel ashamed of their Ottoman heritage. Whereas, yeah. this is another thing, should we feel ashamed of our Islamic heritage? Should we feel ashamed of Islamic Spain, you know, uh, of Tarab and Ziyad? Should we feel ashamed of, in fact, even, you know, the Islamic uh, conquests that the Sahaba were involved in? Uh, what do you think we about should, that? We shouldn't, I think, you know, it's something we should be proud of. The Prophet, you know, when the Muslim is dying, remind him of his history, look at the things that we've achieved. You know, it's just not on about taking land, not about, you know, medically, mm. scientifically, astronomy, there's a lot of things mm. that we've achieved. As, as Muslims, I know with, with a lot of Turks, you know, you can't blame them because in the education system, they're taught as Mustafa Kemal is the hero. I've got a lot of Turkish friends mm -hmm. and uh, to be honest, when you say that they get offended, they don't like talking about the Khilafah. They'll be like, you know, they, these people, mm -hmm. they shamed us. We're known as the old man of Europe because of, you know, because of these Khalifs, you know, we are better where we are. But if you look at Turkey, you know, it was far more, you know, if you look at even Sultan Abdul Hamid, you know, there's a series, Sultan Abdul Hamid series. Yes, Sultan Abdul Hamid's been quite big as well. The, the, this, that, that's the next series that I always recommend people to watch, but it, it's, it's two different things. One's more physical, the other well, one's Well, one's about mental. the founder of the Ottoman Empire, one's about the last Khalifa of the that's Ottoman it. Empire, right? So it's very different. But you speak about Khilafah, Khilafah, when people ever think about Khilafah, which is the idea of an Islamic state, you know, <laughs> that whole term now, you can't even use without being associated in such a bloody, horrible fashion with ISIS or Daesh. You know, you say that word now and all you think about is blood, murder. It's disgusting, obviously, it's how it's been tied to such a dark reality. 
It's like, you know, a few years ago I heard an interview, so, um, Brit British guy, mm. and he goes, we need to take our flag back, meaning that, you know, you know this flag, this red and white one and the Union Jack one, it doesn't belong to the EDL, they're giving us a bad name. Likewise, with Muslims, these flags, the Shahada flag, it doesn't belong to these, so, you know, these so-called... Uh, these psychopaths, yeah, these terrorists. Yeah. It's, it's the flag of Islam, it's the flag that brought, you know, mm. peace, unity, prosperity, you know, it, it gave strength, as it gave strength to the weak. You know, it didn't let the Zalim, you know, overpower mm. the weak. Um, okay, so what's, what, where do you want to take it forward with the base diner? I mean, what's your most popular dish here? Most popular dish? Huge. <laughs> Do you actually want to know the honest truth? Yeah, go ahead. It's actually the full English. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's based like just a Turkish theme, Ottoman based uh, restaurant, and the uh, full English. You can't be the full English. You can't, you know, to be honest, a, a lot of the people that <laughs> live around here, um, that come visit, mm. they're all Asian or the Muslim or some Muslim background. Okay. They're not used to having a fry up for breakfast. Yeah, of They're course, used to yeah, the yeah, normal yeah, Asian. Yeah. Uh, but with the Turkish breakfast, you've got the breads and the, you've got like the certain pastries, <coughs> the cheese, etc. They like the <coughs> olives. The Turkish breakfast, the Weight Watchers do go for it. I'm not going to deny that. So you've got, you know, you've got the olives, you've got your three different type of cheese. You've got the halloumi cheese, mm. you know, you've got your salads there, you've got Turkish bread there, mm. and you've got the menemen as well that, that goes on there as well. Mm. So those who are not looking to fill their stomach with, who've actually come from the gym or something, they would actually mm -hmm. go for the Turkish breakfast <laughs> or the lola. Okay, that's good. Well, I'm going to try some of it, inshallah. Um, where do you want to take this? You want to franchise, inshallah? What are you hoping to achieve? What's the future so for Base Diner? Know, I'm, not, I'm, 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 I'm going to be franchising. I'm not going to be looking to expand it here at all. I've had a few people contact me for franchising. Mm -hmm. But the only issue is even, I don't know if you've looked at our reviews, a lot of people, they talk about the customer service. Mm. When you start franchising, you lose a lot of that. You lose yeah. a lot of quality. People people do say your customer service is brilliant here, yeah? mashallah, and I've seen that. So, um, but yeah, inshallah, I mean, look, I hope you're all the best, my brother. Yeah. Uh, what's the last word you'd like to give no, we always say the, to people, the audience about, from Cloud Shave TV? No, about we always say to people, you know, the hospitality has to be according to the custom and the tradition. That's something that Suleiman Shah used to say. Mm -hmm. You know, when the Seljuk state came against him and they threatened him, and he goes, look, these are our traditions. The traditions are from Islam. You know, you look after the, the one that comes to you the as guest. a guest. Yeah, mm -hmm. of course. And this is what we say, when you come to us as a guest, you know, we want to make you as feel as welcome as you can. We want to give you the best service that you can. And the best experience that we can. It's not, I haven't set this up from a capitalistic point of view, I'm going to get money from it. I've done mm -hmm. it purely from my heart. I think you know what, this is, this is for, I was saying our locals, because in this side of Birmingham, we don't really have much. We have to travel to the other end of Birmingham in order to get quality food. Yeah, so this is actually service. based in, gives the address you're based in Erdington, mm -hmm. right? We're in Erdington, Sutton New Road. Sutton New Road, yeah? Okay. Uh, yeah, so I encourage a lot of people to come here, inshallah. The food is good, the customer service is great. Again, the theme as well. I know you've been in uh, a few articles already. TRT came down, they did a little piece with you as well. So this is an extension of that. And I hope uh, you all the best and you continue to continue doing well, inshallah. And Jazakallah khair for having us and being on the show. No, Make sure you encourage everyone to subscribe onto Close Shave TV, inshallah. No, definitely, brother. my yeah? <laughs> And let us know when you finish the series as well. <laughs> you could have a party here, maybe. No, 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 inshallah. <laughs> like a celebration. Right? Jazakallah khair, barakallah khair. Base Diner, Tuki Shop. Eh, wallah, be. That's it. <laughs>